the conditions and trends are coming back out to the public in number two. The Community Choices Workshop stops us this week. That is what this is technically going to call the Community Choice Workshop. Um, we'll go back and draft the plan, and then in November, December, we'll come out with the draft plan. We'll do a roadshow type thing so people can comment on what that is, and then we'll probably push adoption of the plan to January. Um, I obviously don't want to get involved in the holidays. Um, we'll probably finish in January.
So from those four categories that we broke everything down into, we created four draft goals. So these have been seen by Planning Next as a consulting firm. They've been seen by the stakeholder group multiple times. We've worked through a couple iterations. And this is what we're presenting to the public. So we want to know if we interpreted everyone's comments correctly. Because I'm not always interpreting something the same way you are or you are. Um, language is a funny thing. So we're going to see one to five. One means you don't think this is an important goal at all. You don't like it at all. It's not necessary. And five is we've made it. This is important. We need this in the plan. And we need to make recommendations that support this goal. And then the comments you can write. If you put a three, tell me why. If you put a four, tell me why. If you don't like the words, tell me that. You can break this down into the most the simplest comments possible. If you don't like a word, if you think it's confusing, Governance and cooperation. 
Richard.
in this packet too is also had mentioned in some um, dates on there as well. Um, so maybe before I hand them out, I'll go to a rough overview of what's in there and then we can disperse. Thank you. No problem. And moving on with the city manager's report, our finance discussion with our finance director, Ms. Colleen Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, and members of the public. The um, August financial report for the month of August revenue, we took in $693,392.02. The total expenses for the month of August is $442,000. $1,641.58 and our total expenditures to date is $3,049,377.26. The income tax numbers I'm going to um, share with you are as of July 31st. General fund receded for income tax $86,099.16. Police levy income tax brought in for July, $43,049.58. So the year to date up through July 31st for the general fund has collected $649,297.29 and the police levy has collected I'm sorry, $322,867.90. I had left on their cost for CCA, which is the company that we contract out. That is the same that was on last report, and those figures are just through the first half of the year, but I thought I'd share them one more month. The cost for collection for CCA's fees to collect our income tax for the first half of 2017 cost us $16,405. That was roughly a little under 2% of what they collected. The cost in-house for the city to collect the first half of 2016 was $56,100 and it came up to a little over um, 5%. So, so far in comparison with contracting with CCA for the first half of the year, the city has saved just a little under 40000 It was $39,695. I wanted to go into the pool report since I have probably 99.9% of the numbers for, um, to reflect for the season. The pool brought in for the total year $68,982.90. And the total with the insurance um, invoice that will, the liability that will be coming to us in November, the expenditures are $67,500. $20.69 and the pool made a profit of $1,462 this season with no general fund money. So I don't know to share that. Can you repeat that? Yeah, can you say it one more time? Wow. Do I want to say that a little bit louder? This is the first year in a long time that the pool has an ending balance in the black. $1,462 um, profit with no general fund money being transferred this year. Awesome. Good. Mayor, if I remember, it was <laughs> Mr. Collier, Mr. Rounds. So you said 99.9 percent .9 ends. What's that point one that might be out? Is Just it going to be a little electric bill or a little, you know, right. something well, that you know, that point one might be a fourteen hundred dollar bill. I don't, don't think it's going to run. I want to make sure. Yeah, I'm pretty confident on that. <clears throat> Any other that's questions? That's my question. I just want to make sure that point one wasn't going to be a bigger bill. <laughs> I was just going to say, from my memory, it was just a little bit over 4,000 in the whole last year. Okay. 40, yeah, yeah. yeah. 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. yeah. yeah. This is, that's remarkable. Yeah. Very good year. It was good. Good year. And the general fund transfer has not taken place yet? It will. It will. I don't it will. anticipate any. Okay, just wanted to clear that up. Mr. Bridge asked you if the general fund had been any transfers, and you said you're not anticipating it. Correct. So the bills that are outstanding will be less than the 1400 I believe so. From everything that we've looked and tried to call ahead mm -hmm. on bills that we anticipated, we've got those numbers collected in. The insurance is on there that I know okay. is budgeted, so I do not believe. So I know last 
year, I think there was a surprise quarterly bill that came in like uh, end of September and October. Uh, is that all we paid the chlorine for this year? Chlorine for we, the pool? We're 99.9% .9 sure that yes. So, all okay. Yes. Okay. We tried to stay ahead of it this year okay. so we could call them in and make sure that we had those on our spreadsheet. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And I, I will say, I'm sorry to interrupt anyone, the pool did fantastically this year, um, but there has been some confusion about the general fund transfer and does it truly make a profit or not. And I think this year you're going to see the pool truly make a profit. So hats off to uh, everyone who was involved in turning that pool around and rising <coughs> from the ashes. Um, it's a tax credit. Well, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. We'll just speak as, as if the pool will open next year. There's a lot of new things online for that pool with the swim team coming in and, and more possibility to increase revenue. So um, again, hats off to the managers in place who turn that pool around. Um, it is a community asset. Um, and as long as it does not cost us money to do so, I think we owe it to our citizens to give places for kids to go, um, given that it's not costing us any money to do so. Well, Sarah, I'll just add a, a quick question. If we get, because obviously you can buy a pool pass the way that I think they've got it set up, you know, it's kind of like the, how it might keep on, I think, the, the earlier you buy it, the cheaper it is. So let's say someone buys a pool pass in, say, December. Does it, it goes on this, this paperwork, not next year. Correct? It actually, if we get it receded in December, it will be in this year's books. Okay. So it will increase your revenue this year. It won't. It'll be good for the people to, it'll be their pass for next year. Right. But it's receded this year. Okay. As we sold a few last year at the end of the year for this season, it was receded last year. So we need to differentiate between the two because if there's a pass sold in December, it's not going to go against, even though it's receded, it should not go against the positive or negative balance of this year's pool. Yes, it will. Well, I understand that, but I understand it will, but it should. So we'll have to just keep track of what, what's going on. We need to give a clear picture of what's going on, and that's just why we need to clear it up with what is, even though it is receded, it's not going towards <coughs> next year's revenue, it's going towards next year's. Mr. Craver. Uh, I see April's not here, but Colleen, maybe you know. Under pool rental, um, Mike, you told me that, uh, that there was a lot of rentals this year, for the pool. Mm -hmm. but there's nothing there. Is there? Touch on, don't you put it under? Uh, yeah, we talked. It, it, it goes under the daily gate fees, I believe. Does it go under the gate fees that we put? Okay, I just wanted to know. There was a column there with zero, and I heard it was the pool was rented at least one time each week. So. Yeah, we don't have a lot of um, variety of the uh, revenue accounts. We can detail it out if we need so in the future. As but I want it under daily gates. As long as when you call them, that works. That's all. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Harris. And moving on with the city manager's report, our service discussion with Mr. Howard Kitka. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, Council, members of the public. Quick breakdown of my report. Start off with the service departments. The street department has completed the tree trimming over the road right away in the sidewalk. And I've actually had some calls and run-ins while I've been out on some projects of so thanking us for people being able to walk down the sidewalk without getting hit in the head by trees. So that was definitely a positive thing. Boom arm mowing on the bike path um, is complete. That was completed last uh, last week. Water department has replaced two of the four hydrants, five if we can get to it. Um, so far, that was uh, Funston and Drake. And just FYI, we have a hole dug on a cul-de-sac right now, and we're running into some old age uh, buried equipment that we're having problems with matching parts. So we have a feeling that as we get into future hydrant repairs, especially in the old section of town, significantly trying to adapt 1930s and 50s equipment to today's uh, um, apparatuses. Hydro flushing started September 5th and is scheduled to last four weeks. Uh, various circumstances may extend this schedule. And just FYI, while we're out uh, hydro flushing, um, not to pick on Clark County, but that our water is not like Clark County. We do filter and soften our water, so it is really 99% clean. So we flush hydrants. We don't have the, the, the disturbed uh, sediment that's in the pipes like you find in the posts like they do in the park lane area. However, if you do get some of that, let your bathtub run a little bit. And if you do get some on your whites, we do have the um, iron out type stuff in uh, bottles and things. 
things that we will give to you for free. So just make sure you don't dry the, uh, those clothes and get those iron stains. But in the last two or three years, we have not had one case during our hydro flushing of that scenario. But we do have the equipment to help take care of that. Uh, municipal lot seal coating and striping is scheduled for this weekend, September 23rd and 24th. Um, the street department is currently completing repairs to the lot prior. Um, as a matter of fact, today my uh, street department did complete those asphalt repairs and we happened to run into where the two big dumpsters are on the southeast corner of the municipal lot. We had kind of a dip, we dug that out today, there we found an old cistern. So that's what was collapsing. So I guess where the house was uh, next to the insurance company and on that corner we uncovered an old cistern It was kind of voided and that's what was starting to collapse and then we found some areas um, today over in the other section we had to backfill a little bit. So it's kind of a good thing that we found these. Uh, so they're backfilled, everything's patched. Like I said, Friday night at 9 p.m. is when the parking um, will cease on the lot. We will have it barricaded off and striped so the crews can come in at 8 a.m. and go ahead and get started. The parking will be very similar to what is there now, but it should be a little steeper on the striping so you can get in and out. We may lose uh, one spot right at the entrance because uh, making it a little steeper to get it in and out, it may uh, put that car more on the sidewalk. Uh, moving on to various street projects, uh, that will also be this weekend, September 23rd and 24th, and it's weather pending. It looks like good weather right now, but the what a dog area and the roads of, uh, that I've been listing, um, spinning, Willowick, Applewood, Cloverleaf, Pepperwood, will be milled and paid this weekend. Weather pending again, and that was the last update I got at the end of last week from the county, so it's going to be a very busy weekend. Uh, Prentice Drive Phase 3 and, and 4 reconstruction. That project started April or August 21st and is scheduled to be completed within 60 days. Uh, to date, all storm curb and gutter and I added um, and approaches uh, have been completed as of today and we are looking at possible paving on Monday. So we'll have probably completed this project within 45 days. <coughs> Typically they're given 60 days to do anywhere between 4 and 700 feet. They're going to complete approximately feet in that same amount of time so they're, they're cruising right along and there's no update currently with the scarf road water tower from your last report i can entertain any questions on this report or anything that's been going on around town mr Rubens. you were talking about hydro flushing i just wanted to know maybe this might be a question for the chief how many are active and how many do not work do we have any hydrants in the city that don't work and we have a few we, we do we have 244 hydrants and we're at a well, we were at 14, I think we're down to 12 that are in off. We should be here soon down to 10, and then we'll probably put some in for next year. Thanks. Mr. Um, but the repairs are going on for the hydrant. I saw one from Carol's house that's being, that's being replaced. It's, it's, it's been completed. We're actually doing curb work tomorrow, I think, or the next day, and then we'll finish up topsoil. But it's already been completed, the hydrant replacement. Okay, great. Um, the, the street repairs, the street project, somebody came up to me the other day uh, when I was at the farmer's market said that they, they were told they were not allowed to go down to their house during the repairs. That's not true, I'm sure. Can you just say? You, you're yeah. talking about the Prentice Drive one? Prob I don't Probably because we have it closed and, we, and I have sent out two letters throughout this project that yeah. tells them that they can't park in their driveway because they're pouring right. concrete.
of somebody who's connected to the festival. Harry, you mentioned the municipal parking lot and the work by Water Dog. Is that absolutely going to be done by the 29th, 30th, and 31st? It's supposed to be done this weekend. Done this Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the Water Dog should be a half a day. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kent Carroll. Appreciate it. Well, once again, I love your, that you're going to reports now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very handy to have. I know it's more your time. Thank you. Super duper report. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kiko. Moving on with the city manager's report, our, fi our fire discussion with Fire Chief Chief Chief, Chief Steve Trusty, <laughs> Mayor, members of council, and the public. Uh, for the month of August, the Duclaw Fire Division responded to 64 EMS calls in the city, 12 EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 17 fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. We had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid by either Pike Township or Bethel Park due to Medic 52 being on response. Uh, we answered one mutual aid call from Pike Township and two to Bethel Park. In the month of August, the division responded to three overdose calls in the, in the, in the city area. Uh, two things that's not on the report coming up tonight. One, um, in next month in October, October 8th to 14th is Fire Prevention Week. Uh, we will be doing an open house. I just don't know what date of the week if we're going to be doing it. Uh, we will publicize it in, in the Facebook and I'll also be with uh, city manager by having it on the city Facebook, uh, the dates of the date that we're going to do it. Uh, be open to the public and the training officer, Captain McLean, is sitting up for another auto extrication uh, demonstration for that night. Uh, so people can see the tools and see the uh, guys use the tools. Uh, also, uh, Mr. Pico was talking about the hydrants. Uh, we mentioned sports connections. The new hydrants that they're putting in might look a little different to what the old ones do. The, the large connection on the front will be different, it'll be silver. Uh, reason being that the connection allows us to connect directly to the hydrant without having to use adapters for a large diameter hose. We can just connect, it's a core turn lock type connection instead of having us having to take that cap off, put an adapter on, and then connect the hose to it. Uh, saves a lot of time for us. Um, other than that, any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Chief. We appreciate it. Any questions for the Chief? Sure. No? And moving on with the City Manager's report. Uh, Sergeant Underwood had some last-minute plans, so I will get a copy of his report, and I will email it out to Council. Um, those of you who are attending next week, I'll bring some additional copies so you can take some with you as well. Um, do we have any discussions for uh, Deputy Cruz, who's here in Mr. Sergeant Underwood's place? You look so happy to be here. On a personal note, uh, the deputies were called out to my mother's. Uh, she fell and broke her hip. people came out, uh, stayed with, uh, stayed at the house and uh, made sure that, that the house was secure, that the little dog was secure and uh, <laughs> until I got there, but uh, could not have done any better job than I did. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'll give you kudos also. You were part of Andrew Wright's sermon the other day, so you know, uh, about an something that, that you guys took care of and talked about how professional everybody was and talked about how good the first responders are in this city. So, and I just happened to witness an arrest yesterday, you know, yesterday that they were in and, um, you know, and you guys were very, very nice with that guy. You know, I can tell you a lot about him. He can come to our community dinners, but I'm sure you do. So. I'm, I'm sure you guys know him very well, too. So. Once, at least once a month. At least once a month. Well, I've, I've seen him several weeks. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Craywalker. And moving on with the city manager report. Under informational items, uh, city council, city administration picks. Those are the uh, website pictures that we're, we're, we're going to get. Uh, those uh, will be rescheduled. We'll have further, in, further information to come. Uh, city liability insurance submitted renew renewal forms on 9-11 will be brought to council for approval um, once those are submitted back to me. 
Clark County Sheriff toward their emergency dispatch center on 9-11. Council member, uh, Mr. Lindsay, Fire Chief Tr Trustee, and other members of the Fire and EMS Division attended with, not with me. Uh, we are looking into changing the Fire and EMS dispatching services from the city of Springfield to Clark County. Also attached with the city manager report, DATV, they uh, air our council meetings on public access. They are requesting a $500 donation for us to continue on doing that. Um, last year, I think this was discussed with council and council had instructed me not to send them any money. Um, I think that public access is a great tool. Um, but I also think in the life of YouTube, and our council meetings are already online, free for anyone to choose at their demand, I do not feel as though the city should be sending DAT $500. I think they have done very good with the city. Um, it's not about their level of service. Um, it's just a matter of our finances and where we think they should be best allocated. If we take YouTube off of the, out of the scenario, then maybe I could justify uh, sending them the donation. But again, since we do broadcast ourselves and then upload ourselves, I'm just having a hard time trying to figure out why this should go forth. I will take council's recommendation on this. Um, if it's same as last year, that Mr. Lincoln, I'm sorry to give a question. Mr. Lincoln. Uh, as you know, very seldom I ever agree with you. But I do agree with you in this instance. That's not that, true at all. We, we should not send this by <coughs> donation, invoice, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. We actually agree a lot. No, we don't. Yeah, you do. Yeah, we do. In your nightmares. <laughs> Steve Ross came to me and asked, well, about 500. And I said, well, what about 200? <laughs> and um, so he sent the letter out for 500 anyway. Um, yeah, so I, I know we, there is no way of knowing who is watching it via TV. So like I said, I exempt myself from you know, any opinion on that person. I am on the committee you know, for that. Um, but however, Jason has been sending them to them, and that's why they can continue to error. Jason has to quit sending them to them in order for them not to error. Are we being charged? No, there's no charge okay. for it. It's a it's a donation. It's a, yeah, I just want to make sure it's like we're sending it to them. They're charging us. No, and, that, and, that, and that's what you know. Randy and I talked about. And I said, well, you did use the equipment basically because they were sent to them. So. You just have to instruct Jason not to send them. Sure. Uh, what channel are you hearing on, Mr. Lindsay? Or did you finish? I'm finished. Yeah, we channel 26. Also, I, I disagree with you a little bit on the service because I've watched it and you never see a complete one. It never goes to the end. Because no, they, they allocate X amount. Exactly. So if we have a very long time. council meeting, exactly. then they'll cut it off at that. Exactly. Maybe we have an hour block or two hour block. Very but, seldom do you ever see the whole thing. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. They will cut it off to a year or two. You got 59 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, exactly. Oh, is that what it is? 59 30? Sure. Thanks, Mr. Lindsay. Speed meeting. Oh, John, you answer my question. Thanks, sir. Mr. Lindsay. We might be put in a situation where we're, uh, we need that $500, so. Sure. All right, I think I got the consensus of council, so. Uh, I'll send a letter out to uh, the great folks at DAT, thanking them for their ample years of, of, of doing this, because there was a time when we did not put our council meetings on YouTube, and that was the only avenue that our citizens had to watch that without coming here. Um, but I think it's probably best if, if we just, we, we'll stop sending them the tapes so they don't have to feel as though they need to put it on there um, without without our donation. Real quick, Mr. Bridge, I don't want to get too far off and uh, mm -hmm. keep going on this, but I, I want to ask anybody in the audience what their opinions are on, you know, if, if anybody sure. else have anything to talk. I know some people don't have internet and cell phones and things of that nature, so if anybody has any comments on it, I'd like to hear it. 
guess that answers that. I do believe that's all I have for the city manager report. I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Thank you, sir. tax levies and certify them, that certifying that. them to the county on once again accepting the rates as determined by the yeah. budget commission this is what we do every year to get our budget process started yeah. i mean we have this resolution every single year that's in existence but obviously there's some been some internal discussion on the council because not one person had said i'll accept this so we need to get this passed. They have to have this back to them by October 1, or we don't get our funds certified. So this is just a general housekeeping. So this, if any confusion has this. this. I am, hang on just a minute. I am confused because I could swear, and I could be wrong if I am, please tell me, that Nick said it made no difference what we did with this, it didn't change it. This has this is not the same thing. Local government fund distribution is is 
this is from this, 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 this here, it's a levy that we have yeah. passed. Yes, that's the levy that we have had passed. Yeah, this has nothing to do with the local, with the local government. Oh, okay, okay. And I read the whole thing and I thought that's what it was. Yeah. Because, oh, it's the budget yeah. commission. Hey. Yeah, I read the whole thing. I thought it was cool. Mr. Reynolds? Well, I have the first page and it was set up differently than the normal resolution. So I was like, I, I didn't see it. It said resolution the very team. Yes, yes, yes. So I was used to something like this. So I was going to vote for something like that. This is the same form I've done every year I've been city manager. Yeah. Because they don't, we don't write the ordinance. How they do that is well, they just send them that. How many ordinances? 30 and you've been city manager for two years. So that's, let's say, on average, that's 16, uh, 90 ordinances. Like, I've not got four resolutions in ordinance. I'm not going to remember. Do you, or it looks like every year. No, but so that, I, was, I was making sure that we actually had it. So I went back through and then just saw on the very top up here in the right corner said how to leave it out like this with the normal resolution. But that's what I was thinking. I didn't have it. But, but that doesn't pre doesn't doesn't pre prevent anyone from reading what's on the paper. Yeah, well I didn't see in the top right corner. Right. I read this. All right. Okay, what are all these funds for? I was gonna actually ask that question. So, okay. so we got Mr. Kreebach with the first. A motion by Mr. Kraybacher, second by Mr. Leffler. Okay. An annexation of this, this is a resolution that we accept the rates for the levies that we have in place. Uh, this is general housekeeping and is done every single year. Um, so that's why this resolution is in place in front of council tonight. Anyone? Mr. Collier. Mr. Craybacher. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Lutter. Yes. Resolution 1718R passes 7 0. Third drop down ordinances. Three tonight with action. Yes. Ordinance 17-30 public hearing in action tonight, an ordinance amending section 1040 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding online utility payments. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Lowry, motion to adopt ordinance 17-30. Second. I got Mr. Leffley on that second. A motion by Mr. Rick Lowry, second by Mr. Leffley. <coughs> And an explanation of this ordinance, this is the uh, ordinance that will allow uh, the city to pursue uh, going to online water payments for our residents. And how many days will it take? I'm anticipating this be probably uh, around the first of the year. The first of the year. We've got to wait for the website to be finished up and all of this. Yeah, there's a few things that need to go on the back end. Okay. Sure. Are you ready, Mr. Collier? Mr. Kraybacher? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Leff? Yes. Sir. Ordinance 17 30 passes 7 to 0. Ordinance 17-31, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending section 1042 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding online utility payments. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Reynolds. Here to accept ordinance 17-31. Second. Mr. Reynolds and Mr. Lindsay. Got it. It's an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this is basically the same thing that we're going to do. We have to uh, also amend our wastewater ordinances to allow for the online payments as well. And that's what this ordinance does. Thank you, Council. Any questions? Are you ready, Mr. Collier? <laughs> Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Lethley? Yes. Sir. Mr. Craybach? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. 
Ordinance 1731 passes 7 to 0. Ordinance 17-32 public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance of the City Council of New Carlisle, Ohio, authorizing a credit card processing fee for all credit card transactions at the City Administration Building. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Move to accept Ordinance 17-32. Second. Uh, it's an explanation of this ordinance. Um, whew, how long ago did I submit that nice Excel sheet with all the credit card fees we pay on there? Uh, about a month, month and a half ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, we pay an exuberant amount of credit card processing fees that come out of our waste uh, general fund. Um, when we do the online payment, um, people will still be able to come to the city building and use their credit card. However, what we are, um, what I have put in front of council is the same fee structure that is used for all, uh, online payments. We want that to mirror what is online. You don't want to give a benefit to uh, say, all right, you don't have to have a payment at the window because, I mean, you don't have to have a fee associated with the use credit card use at the window, but then it would defeat the purpose of having the online payments, and it's definitely not going to encourage people to use the online payments, but more importantly, it's going to help reduce the funds coming out of the general fund process that have to pay for processing the credit card fees. Convenience fee. Convenience fee. Which is normal practice for, I would assume, most businesses that that fee is built into their, their price structure, whatever yeah. product they make, sure. including the price of water. I want to confirm that our, the company that we use to process the, the fees or the credit cards is not Security National Bank. The company that we use to process fees is not Security National Bank. That is correct. That is, that is correct. correct. Thank you. Potential conflict. I want to avoid conflict. Thank you for being an ethical council member. <laughs> when you're ready, Mr. Collier. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Lethley? Yes. Mr. Craybock. Yes. Ordinance 1732 passes 7-0. So we've officially moved into the state of technology. Finally. It's getting there. We moved up in the 1800s. We're going to go to bed in there. Well, most of the 21st. <laughs> All right. Um, I know you've got some things to handle on your other business uh, real quick, Mr. Bridge. I just wanted to ask Mr. Kicker one more time. Other than weather, they will be starting this coming weekend. I mean, unless like we tell you something, fold or something by then. But I will update you as often as I can. But that's and the weather, the weather, looks the weather looks beautiful. Yeah, that's that's just what I was right. right. I'm, I'm, I'm not right. anxious. Mr. Mayor, thank you for the weather. It's 86 on Friday. Yeah. What? Yeah, 86 Friday. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's going to be one of those things for everybody. It's going to be every day this weekend. <laughs> There's some water in this. Put some water in there. All right, are you ready, Mr. Bridge? All right, are we ready? Other business? Don't put all you. All right, uh, do you mind if I just do this before you get into other businesses? Other It'll thing? give me a chance to fill out all this right, mess. All right, perfect. Just perfect. resolution, perfect. I gotta. So, uh, what I have for council, but I also have some things for the guests in our audience, too. Your packet for the guests is not as thick as the council. You have everything in this packet with the exception of the budget that they will be taking a look at. I can email you a copy. You can stop in the office to get it. It's not a big deal, um, but it is 60 pages. And I'm sorry, council, I did do this front to back, so it's really 30. Um, yes, I did. Go for it back. Right now, um, let me see. What I would like to do is just go ahead and maybe read the first page and then go through and explain some of the stuff that's in this and then give the give everything to you seven and then people in the audience. So I'll give you a copy of this since I'm going to read it. Thank you. Uh, so City Council, the city of New Carlisle will face an approximate 60% or 984000 reduction of general fund revenue if the income tax credit is approved.
approved by the voters in November. Our tax administrator has put together details of this loss of potential revenues, and you are being provided a copy of that today. It is imperative that we cut drastically in our general fund, as this shall take a direct hit if the tax is voted in. The 0.5% police levy fund will also suffer major reduction of funds because those re because its revenues are derived from the amount of income tax our New Carlisle receives. This potential income tax credit will have a ripple effect on all city operations, including how, including how many staff the city can feasibly afford, what services are offered to the public and the frequency of those offerings, and how much we can spend to operate this complex organization known as our city. Due to a potential reorganization on the way certain funds pay into personnel services, the general fund, the water fund, the wastewater fund, and the street funds are all facing potential cuts. City Council must approve all budget-related items, so therefore I must use the word potential. Our enterprise funds, wastewater and water, are not healthy funds as it is. We need to begin to trim now to aid these funds in being more so in being self-supported with the lack of general fund revenue. Maintaining these two operations safely and effectively are paramount given the nature of their purpose. In the event of a major equipment break or unfunded mandate by the EPA, neither of these fund reserves are strong enough to take the hit and will rely on the general fund for obtaining more debt. The target savings for the water fund is $95,000 and $75,000 for wastewater. Below is a chart, it's gonna be that second page that shows the projected 2018 general fund and 0.5% police levy revenues with and without a tax credit. If the tax credit is given, the city will have to cut $879,500 to operate without using any reserves in the general fund and 0.5% police levy fund. I have attached an Excel sheet that details the proposed cuts from the general fund and the 0.5% police levy fund, but have given an overview of the numbers below. Please note the enterprise funds are only able to be used for their respective funds and do not include any general fund cuts. So that was page one. When you get to page two, it's going to have a JPEG of an Excel sheet that's on top, and it just says, again, 2018, no tax credit, 2018 with tax credit. Then it goes down here to break out even more. The department cuts just the number amount. You can go to the Excel sheet to get the details. Notification of job layoff and or abolishment. There should be no surprise that some positions will be laid off or abolished to the city's new operational and financial reality. Potentially, we can expect up to 4.5 jobs to be directly affected. This is across the general fund, enterprise funds, and the street funds. It is best to follow the notification schedule below because there are many unknown variables still in place and city council must approve all budgetary actions. So everything is open to change. It is imperative we follow the collective bargaining agreement that we have in place between uh, with our hourly employees and give employee notifications 30 days prior to a job that is being laid off, 60 days prior to a job that is being abolished. If those two notifications date sets known. If you are an employee and you will be laid off or your job will be abolished, you'll be notified on November 8th, 2017. That is a day after the election. If laid off, that will take effect December 11th, 2017. If your job is abolished, it will be January 2nd, 2018. Third page goes in to say work session and town hall meeting dates. Work sessions, city managers proposing a work session on off city council meeting dates. This would be the following weeks, September 25th, October 9th, 
week of October 23rd and the week of October 30th. Town Hall meetings. Early voting begins October 11th. Suggested Town Hall meeting dates for early voting. October 7th, October 9th, October 10th. Actual voting day is November 7th. Suggested dates for the Town Hall meeting prior to that date would be Thursday, November 2nd, Friday, November 3rd, Saturday, November 4th, Monday, November 6th. Location, suggested New Carlisle Elementary School. I did reach out to them. They have a fall play that is scheduled to be on November 3rd. Prior to that, their space may be already called, uh, used. Alternative location, Sacred Heart Church, where the uh, Rotary has their, is that Sacred Heart? Uh, so wherever Rotary has theirs would be Sacred Heart Church would be a second location. I have not reached out to that organization at this point. The rest of the stuff I have go on here just goes on here at the flight booth. This is a great way to speak directly to the residents based off recent emails. Below is the current availability of city council members and myself, the city manager. Please contact city council. This is directed to you. Please contact me when your availability is known so we can have this event covered. This is a great way for us to get out the gate on our first really initial meeting, our opportunity to go face to face with a large group of people. We need to hit this one and hit it hard. So what I did is went through the emails. I have just anyone who that responded, I have you there. Um, so council, take a look at this and shoot me an email so we can fill up the space a little bit more. Right now, we have discussions with the union. What I have cut from the budget from the city side is the removal of the 60% HSA city provided deductible. Right now, according to the current agreement with the collective bargaining agreement, um, the city is required to put $60,000, I mean 60% of a HSA deductible into an employee's account. That includes our hourly employees and also us, our administrators. Um, that costs about $41,000 a year. I have taken that out. And that has to be discussed with the union. Since it's already in the contract, they have to vote on it. There will be more information to come on that. I have also uh, reduced the office hour staff to 32 hours a week. That's just how much they will show up to work. That will be on a per low basis. Again, that is in uh, you know, negotiations with the union. Um, that is projected to save us an estimated ten dollars to $18,000 annually if the union agrees to do that. Um, and again, with that one, it says more information to come. An official request to reopen the current collective of bargaining agreement will be sent to Dave Coleman, he's our staff representative, and to Scott Thomason, who's the union staff representative, in the very near future. This request will center around the HSA deductible removal and reduction of hours offered. The outcome of these variables submitted to unionized employees of the city of New Carlisle affects the final outcome of this dire situation. Given that I have multiple funding scenarios in place, it would be much easier knowing more facts to go into these equations. City manager proposal, service reductions. Reduce the hours that also the office building is open to the public. Suggested only open 20 to 24 hours a week. This will aid to thin out staff and work completion. This is still negotiable. Removal of the following free services to the city residents. Lemon brush pickup, leaf pickup. Reduction of the following services, snow removal, abatement programs, grass cutting to include the parks and the cemetery. Attached with this packet, I have a copy of the 2018 tax budget that goes to council members. We have the Excel sheet that outlines the general fund cuts and the police levy cuts. I had a lot of questions about what exactly a reciprocal agreement is, so I had our tax administrator give us a little scenario about what it is, so this can hopefully pass out to residents. So if you are confused about what it is, this should clear it up. I also have made a flyer. Oh, hold on, I skipped one. This is the uh, income tax amount we're going to be uh, projected to lose. This is also from our income tax administrator, but it does detail what we tax, what we tax, and what we're going to lose. And the last item is here is I have already put together a mailer that we mailed out to every one of the residents in New Carlisle. 
This is a wordy one. I understand that. It's just the first draft. This is going to be mailed directly to someone's house. It is not going to be passed out in a just a quick buy. This really goes into everything that they need to know. Um, that is what is included with this packet. As a city manager, I feel as though I have completed the first round of what I needed to do. These past two weeks have been extremely stressful. We do not have a budget that allows for much cut. There is no fluff in our budget to begin with. We have done a good job of, of underspending and then slashing what we don't need. Going through the budget, Projected 2018 revenues, no credit, 1.785 million. Projected 2018 revenues with a tax credit, $905,745.95. That's where I get my immediate need to cut of $879,500 to us for to break even and not to get into any of our, our reserves. Right now, first round cuts, 665,000. We're still 214 under. So that being said, that two, if we don't find anything else to cut, that 214 will eat into our reserves. Until we know how 2017 is going to pan out, um, we're not gonna have a clear picture, but I am estimating the city to be um, in fiscal watch by the end of 2020, beginning of 2020. So we are in dire, grave situations. Um, I will pass this out to council. What I would like to do immediately is set a work session or a special meeting. Um, do you guys want to do it this week or do you want to do it the week of September 25th? Um, I still need to get with Lynette. I did get a memo from our turn today out of Dean Clarence Pregon. She may, and I got to redo the, I got to reread the memo. She doesn't feel as though we need to put official legislation on for us to expend our resources. It might be good faith and effort to do so, but I don't think it's required at this point. So um, what I would like to see happen is you guys take this information for a couple days. Either we schedule a work session or we schedule a special meeting. I think that we will miss the ball if we do not get together immediately. We are in uh, a very dire time frame, and especially with the Heritage Flight Festival coming up, I think that we need to hit the ground running. I have submitted enough material for council to get going on this. This is all a teamwork environment. I invite, I see some faces that are running for council. We need your input just as much as you are on council now. This is a city-wide thing. I was talking to Mr. Craybacher not too long ago, and I kept on saying, where is the pride in this town? I'm from a little town in Cincinnati called Reading, Ohio. And if you're from Reading, Ohio, you're very proud to be from that town. That football team could be 0-10 and, and everybody still goes to the football game. There, I, where is the pride in this town? Who in their right mind would think this is a great idea? All the progress that we have made in the past three years is about ready to be out the door. We've got three, four, five people on this road here that have worked tirelessly to get the budget to where it is. We have made great change in the past two and a half, three years. And I do not want to see my hard work, Howie's hard work, Ms. Harris's hard work, Keith Trusty's hard work go down the drain because of this. We are paving more streets than we have ever had before in the past. We are saving more money than we ever before in the past. We need to keep that tree going. Um, what I have for the audience, I know as I explained it, if you want a copy of this budget here, I'd be happy to give it to you. I didn't want to overshoot copies today without knowing who was all here. You have my contact information. I can email you a copy of this. I can hand uh, print you one out. Um, pretty dire situation, guys. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, I had our staff meeting today. I, quite frankly, I cried when I got to the last paragraph where I saw it. This is absolutely, will be devastating to this town. And that's all I have. Uh, I have one quick question, sure. Randy, and not questioning your work. Just no. how did you guys come up with the 60%? Because I hear that question. 60% what? Cut. Income. It comes down to, it's all, all that is explained right here on this sheet. So it's in the that comes down to a matter of what we withhold, what we don't withhold. And then she takes, and this is all done. I am no tax expert. I'll just be honest with you right now. But it comes down to our 
business holdings, individual holdings, and then she calculates backwards and then she gets this estimate. So they're, they're pretty solid figures. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah, and this is professionally done by our tax administrator. Thank you. Mr. Well, I know the need to have on these work sessions or special meetings, but do you think we should wait until after the heritage price so we can hand these people this information so they know about it? Because in a week, it's hard to publicize it in a one. Well, I think that we need to have a work session to make a, to get this stuff going because we That's need a lot of work to do before the heritage flight right. starts. Exactly. Especially if we man the booth. Well, I was thinking that uh, maybe schedule another one after the heritage flight. I mean, I know that we need this one here in the next week or so. Um, my next question would be is, do the, how many town halls do we want to have? I mean, how many people show up to council meetings? It's going to be better to be oh, three. You were absent last week. I oh, so sorry. Yeah. yeah, that's right. We talked about that. We talked. <laughs> What I am proposing is if we don't have a council meeting that week, we will have a work session. Okay. Okay. Town hall meetings, I originally just said, hey, we need to at least have one before the election. And I think Mr. Leslie had brought up, what about early voting? Early voting. So we're going to at least have two. We're going to have one before early voting starts, and that early voting starts October 11th. Yep. So we have a town hall meeting prior to that date, and we'll have another one prior to the actual voting day on the So what I want to do is I want to get the letters before the 11th so that people can have them before they vote. Chasers. Yeah, and I already thought of that. That's why I got that mailer flyer done now, because I want you guys to look at it, because that's what needs to go in the mail to hit. We need to, I honestly anticipate that flyer going out twice. I want to get it out as soon as possible now, and I want to do it again around November. You need to have some calls. sort of meeting next Monday. But, yeah, I agree. I was just making sure. Like, I mean, I know we have all these meetings, but I think we also need to be kind of the too. Oh, I, I agree. agree with you. Up the meetings. I mean, I love seeing this is a big crowd for us today. Mm -hmm. You know, so normally it's just Nettie and Carolyn Ron. And maybe that work session we get together. I mean, that's I, we need we need to have a work. You got to understand. It. I, 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 and this is no disrespect. I, I can't do it all just because I don't know your guys' schedule. Yeah. I mean, we need to get together to say, all right, we need to shoot for this week, or we need to definitely hope her down because we have the heritage of flight, so we need a pamphlet made before that. You're right. We got to hit the street because people aren't going to come to us. No, right. You know, so, but we need that, we immediately need that first work session to iron out exactly what we're right. discussing. Yeah. Right. I agree, because I think it's voters because they're 32 percent of the electorate and off your side then you need to be part of this because you understand more than anyone in here how this stuff works especially when it comes to voter and the statistics and the statistics and the theories behind all this stuff i mean you're definitely a tool so put all our heads together and let's get this thing done um, yeah I, I personally would like to have the meeting this week just one of them like maybe wednesday just so like so we can now we got the information it gives us a day and a half to look it over specific information we can put on this flyer for, for sure. the flight festival. Wednesday or Thursday would be Tuesday. fantastic. You have, I mean, you guys got a lot of information to go over, so be wary of that when you set this date. Are you, if you can, this yeah. Yes, I'd like to have this week, the sooner the better. But I think, I mean, I know that they works for me. Wednesday's the only day it works for me. Wednesday? Tuesday. Mr. Reynolds, you can Tuesday, come Wednesday, Monday, 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 Monday. Yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. After 6 o'clock. 6.30? 6 6.30. Wednesday. Is that enough time for you? Yeah. Oh, okay. What's the day? Wednesday's good. Wednesday the 20th. Wednesday the 20th, 6.30. So you, do we need yes, to do yeah, we need a vote. I need a motion on that. Uh, uh, so move the left leg. I move that we get a special meeting Wednesday. Is it a special meeting or a work session? Work session. Work session. Work session. Okay, because if we need to do the ordinance, that's going to have to be at the next council. I don't think you're ready for that yet. Well, well, that's, that's, that has it. That comes from our attorney. Okay, so I think we're fine. Motion by Mr. Lethe and second by Do we need a work session or do we need a special meeting? Well, it depends. Are you guys okay with spending money without passing an ordinance? No. no. Yes. No. Who made that motion, Mayor Lowry? Uh, Mr. Lethe, motion no. second by Mr. Lighty. This is more. What are you guys doing? Work special? Work, work session. Work, work session. Okay. At 6.30? Yes, sir. On Wednesday. Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Yes, sir. Reynolds. Quick question. Yes. Uh, we're talking about expending money. Do we want to make that motion? We can do that currently, Mr. Coyer. Is that a lot? So expend I would can, do that. I would yeah, do that. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me run some things and review some things. Just wondering. I wouldn't go there tonight. Money. 
because I think there needs to be a set limit to that. Yes. How much you spend, um, and that should be just a custom up to you guys the numbers. Let me get some. Let me get some numbers in place, like how much it's going to cost to put a mailer out to the entire citizen base. There's ways to cut down this cost. Though. How's that? For for mail. Huh? Easy way to cut down that cost for mail. Hand yeah. deliver. Oh, hand deliver it, or the easiest way is instead of doing uh, an actual letter, you can cut it down to a four by six, which brings your cost down to thirty four cents a stamp instead of forty six cents a stamp. Yes, sir. I am not aware to shelter houses booked or not. I'll have to get back to you guys on the location. Well, we can find okay. Then you can meet Monday if you need to have a special day at our house. Yeah. Yeah. So is it going to be just let me know? All right. Fire house here. Here. I'll let you know. I'll shoot you an email. I'll do first thing. First thing in the morning is yeah. here for what for me, right? Here, I'll see. All right, Mr. Uh, Collier, when you're ready, sir. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Leslie. Yes. Mr. Craybocker. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Motion to have a work session on 920 at 630 passes 7 to 0. All right, Mr. Bridge, you have you got to go through or we're just going to hand them out now? Or? No, I'm, I'm going to walk around real quick. Are you guys, oh, are we adjourned? I have no clue what's going on. Yes. Yes. Always. 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 Mr. Cobb is my original. What you want out of the Constitution? If you get the younger generation, all they're looking at is what's in the pocket. But I'm a senior from this list and are confused. I agree with you. It is. Sunday morning, I noticed on the way to church, my crop walk signs were gone. So my wife and I went to look for 
we found our signs on Church Street. I'm not going to name the address, but also what I, I saw was something that was very disheartening that early in the morning, which I saw a lot of political signs out in somebody's yard. I know, and the people were standing out, were standing out in the yard, and my wife, you know, and I got out, and they were pretty upset. They thought that they were targeted by probably youths or kids or something, but the neighbors even said the same thing. The family was a Hispanic family, and they tell me that they, that they, they don't feel safe, and that's scary, and that is upsetting to me that they said that. I don't know, I know the deputies here that, that took the report, or not, no, you didn't take the report, your partner did. Sheila? Your partner took the report, right? Right. She's a little on action. Yeah. But do you know any, any more that, than what I'm saying about the signs out in the front yard? No, yeah, they won't call it in for anything else. Yeah. So it's illegal to take the political signs out of somebody else's yard. Yeah. If they're in my yard, if Mr. Cobb puts one in my yard, Bill Cook or Chris or Aaron, you know, um, it's illegal for you to pick them back up and take them someplace else. I had somebody take my signs one time, uh, you know, also. And I think some of us had experienced that while we were running, you know. And it's a shame that we can't just put them into somebody's yard and keep them there. That we have to do damage and to harass somebody else. Um, I can go further down. Thank you, sir. Council, any other comments, questions, audits? Chief Trustee. Mr. Mayor, just one question on the Harvest, uh, the Flight Festival. We had an incident last year with the wide load coming through. Has anyone checked with ODOT about making sure that they're... We're, yeah, it's, it's taken care of. That was, a, that was a freak of nature, Chief. <laughs> it's happened, it's happened more than yeah. once. Three years ago, they had a big pipe come down on a trailer. So... The only, the only thing he said last year was that driver knew what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. That was scary. Yeah, that's taken care of. I'm about to wear. Thank you. Mr. Reynolds. Good leisure. 